I'm Jared DeAnda, and this is Snap-on Tools Great Garages. We're just outside Orlando, Florida, and beyond these gates is the Stewart Compound. We'll show you two wheels, four wheels, and a handful of great garages. Come along. Big James, James Stewart Sr., thank you for letting us in. First and foremost, we had to get through that gate, but what a surprise. Where are we right now, though? Yeah, in Big James' shop. This is my getaway. I'm a dad myself, so I can relate. You can't deny this huge Snap-on cabinet back here, man. Why are you a Snap-on guy? You know, my wife asked me the same question, and like I tell her, when you buy your clothes, you buy the best one time. When you buy a Snap-on too, you don't have to buy a second one, you buy it once. I mean, I'm a Snap-on guy, now I wear Snap-on boots. I was gonna say that, you didn't need to dress up for us, but outside, how many acres are we looking at this Stewart compound? We're sitting on 100 acres right here, and two Supercross trike shops where we build the bikes, everything to go racing, we have it. It's a full shop and you got a couple houses, you got dogs running around, but there are locks on these cabinets. Malcolm and James, do you unlock them to let them use them? My kids know this is my purse, this is my wallet. So if they need something, I have Snap-on tools that I loan them. It's almost been an evolution seeing James and then now Malcolm. I, I think you've done a great, phenomenal job. Speaking of job, what are you working on over here? I have a 71 K10 Chevy truck that I'm actually implementing a uh, LS2 engine in it. What's your most used Snap-on tool or most favorite Snap-on tool? I'll show it to you. Okay, what do you got? Okay. Anybody that works on anything, this little 3 8 in pipe, you don't tell the Snap-on guys, but you can take <laughs> lugs nuts off with it. <laughs> <laughs> it would do it. This is my favorite tool out of all the tools in my toolbox. Let's check out this Stewart compound, man. Absolutely. All right, thanks Let's again. This. Big James, the tour continues. Memorabilia, die cast cars, and big cars. You have a huge Chevrolet collection, but what are some of your favorites? My favorite actually is I have a 71 Blazer, and I built this thing from nothing. When I first purchased the vehicle, it looked like a complete car, but once I started taking it apart, it fell apart. <laughs> if I hadn't have bought all the parts before and had them sitting here, I would have never built that beautiful thing. Be noted. Chrome wheels on everything, man. Hey, Chrome is coming back. I never got away from it. That's the brotherly love right there. <laughs> That's the real hardcore. You know, back in the days, you wanted Chrome wheels because you couldn't get them. Now you can get them and everybody wants to go buy. I'm sticking with it. I'm old school. I think this is kind of like a scrapbook for you. I think this tells about your life. You know, I have been blessed. I like to show my stuff. I yeah. like to bring people and show it, you know, just like, hey, hard work pays off. How many boxes do you have around this place? I have eight boxes. Tell us about this box over here, that 35th. Oh, that's my baby over there. Z28 Camaro, 35th anniversary. Why is this box special to you? My first car I ever owned was a Z28, and I drove it to high school. I have owned several of those cars up there, probably one of each. I saw this box on a Snap-on truck. He delivered this box, and ever since this guy delivered this box to me, I have had a Snap-on truck show up at my house every week. Are you gonna get the 50th anniversary box? It's time to upgrade. This won't go anywhere now. It's never leaving. I don't sell tools, I buy tools. This whole compound's incredible. We've been inside, but I wanna go check out Two Wheels, wanna check out Malcolm's setup, talk to some of your technicians, and see more of this 100 acre compound. I have a 100 acre farm. If we can, let's just go check out more of this facility. You let them know you got the dangerous dog right there. You let them know. You see the sign? Bad day, you see? <laughs> Malcolm, we've made our way down the hill to Two Wheel Land. We saw your dad's amazing car collection, but we got to come over here because this has helped pay the bills. The motorcycle. Yeah, you got to have all the nice tools and everything, but without the motorcycle, none of that would be there. So. <laughs> This is literally the race shop. It's not that big, but a lot of championships done came in here, gone, a lot of different manufacturing motorcycles. Well, it seems like it's in the Stewart genes. You know, your dad grew up and he parked it because he wanted to help your brother oh, develop. Well, he parked it because he crashed. That was it. So it was, don't let him fool you. Like, he, he took a big spill. He's like, the first time he ever got knocked out and he was like, I don't remember everything. He's like, that's it, I'm done. So he still has a mindset that he still wants to do it. He just, he's got a little bit of fear. What is this bike? What do we have here? Well, this is the practice bike right now. Um, it's a duplicate of the race bike. Everything that you see from 
forks, handlebars, wheels, you know, exhaust, everything's the exact same as the race bike. You're 24 years old, about to be 25. How amazing is it to have this playground? You have tracks out here. It's paradise. We got unlimited water, so <laughs> I can ride all day I want. Anytime we do testing and have the teams come down and stuff like that, we can test all day. So it's really beneficial for me. And a lot of professional riders moving to Florida. I mean, we got, you know, Ryan Dungey, Marvin Busquin, even Ricky Carmichael. I love it. I love yeah. this place and uh, I would never leave it. The progression of the sport, seeing your brother, what he's done, do you feel like you have big boots to fill? Uh, I gotta realize that I'm Malcolm. I will never ever be out of the shoes. You start maturing and realizing what you want. Well, you definitely make a name for yourself, so hats off to you, but wanna know more about this bike, so we'll bring in your technician. Oh, he's gonna break down for us. All right, so Jason, you are the mechanic. You got your hands all over this bike. How does this bike compare to a dealership bike? Well, this bike is a lot different than a stock RMZ 450. We got A-kit suspension right here, as you can see. So the tubes are a lot bigger on this suspension. We got different clamps. Motor package is obviously different. Different wheels, stronger. Exhaust, shaved seat. We try to shave off as much weight as we can. How do you set up this bike compared to the race bike? We set it up pretty close. Race day, we'll always do some tweaking on the suspension mostly, maybe change out some sprockets, depending on how tight open the track is. I mean, you gotta think the world of Malcolm I mean, bringing you to a 250 championship last year. Yeah, yeah, I always believe in Malcolm. I mean, I've been a fan of the Stewart since I was a kid growing up. I mean, it's always been a dream. I used to wait in the autograph lines for miles for James, his brother, just to get an autograph. Being able to be out here working with them and hanging out with them every day has been fun, it's cool. I mean, I believe in them. What's your favorite tool? I like using my torque wrenches. These are definitely my favorite tool and I trust them. Malcolm's life is kind of on this bike whenever he's riding, so you want to make sure everything is torqued and nothing's going to fall off while he's out there racing. Digital is nice because you could do all in one. We use, you know, foot pounds, inch pounds, and that's about all we really use on this thing. Cool. Well, thank you so much for your time, man. Congratulations oh, you. on all your success and thanks for using Snap on Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for watching Snap-on Tools Great Garages. For more videos, click here. And for all things Snap-on, be sure to subscribe.